so good morning everyone uh, and I have the great pleasure to open this lunch debate. My name is Radostina Primova. I am the head of the climate and energy program uh, at the Heinrich Böll Foundation European Union. The Heinrich Böll Foundation is the German Green Political Foundation and we work uh, in particular our Brussels office focuses a lot on the European energy transition and international climate policy as we, we have a special program on the European energy transition and uh, so today I have the great pleasure to open but also to moderate the debate when we're trying to tackle two very important uh, issues for Europe right now. Uh, the first thing is how we could advance the European energy transition and uh, also fight, fight climate change which is one of the top priorities right now for the European Union as the EU adopted the, its uh, decarbonization strategy for 2050 and currently uh, we also, the clean energy package has been finalized. Uh, um, currently the member states need to also finalize their national climate and energy plans. And uh, this is also a great opportunity to address also the topic how we could involve uh, civil society and different uh, target groups and uh, to have active citizen participation uh, also in the energy transition. So the next big challenge is how we could also fight youth unemployment and how we could interconnect these two very important areas involving uh, the youth and uh, keeping the, jo the jobs local in the regions and at the same time uh, um, also become Europe to become a leader in green innovations. Uh, last year we published the Energy Atlas 2018 which already presented our vision for the European energy transition. We promoted a discussion on how the energy transition is going on in different uh, member states, how we should better interconnect the different sectors like electricity, transport, uh, heating and cooling. Uh, how we could also better empower European citizens so that they can have an active role in the energy transition uh, on a European national but also local level. And this kind of energy transition is a huge opportunity also for Europe uh, to achieve more prosperity in a sustainable way by keeping the jobs local in the regions. Um, and already uh, we see that this economic uh, transformation uh, is already leading to more Europeans are now employed in well-paid uh, and secure jobs in the renewable energy sector. Um, and uh, in 2016, there were 1.1 million jobs in the renewable energy, of which uh, 300,000 were in Germany. Uh, and uh, local renewable energy pro uh, projects in particular provide eight times more local economic value than projects owned by outside developers. Um, on the other hand, renewables have the potential to reduce uh, Europe's energy bill. So uh, since 2012, only by promoting renewables internally, Europe managed to slash import bills for, fos uh, like, uh, import bills for uh, fossil fuels by more than 35%. Uh, so there are huge opportunities also for the restructuring of the coal regions and uh, basically building on the engineering skills, infrastructure and everything there to use the huge solar potential. And there was a study uh, by the Joint Research Center of the European Commission that evaluated that several co-producing regions in Green, Spain and Bulgaria hold a significant potential for solar power generation and transforming these coal mines into renewable energy sites. So we need, uh, also there is a huge demand for workers and we could keep not only the coal workers but also the young generation of pr uh, basically involve the young people. But in Europe also we see a huge ga gap happening that in spring 2017 we have more than 4 million Europeans that are unemployed and unemployment rates are particularly high in Greece, 43%. In Spain, 41%, 35% in Italy, and 24% in France. Particularly alarming also is the proportion of young Europeans who are unemployed and at the same time without any professional formation or without the possibility to participate. And so these young people uh, could be engaged to um, in the European energy transition. In order to tackle these questions, uh, I we basically we have invited uh, experts, a team composed of um, uh, composed of the Greek NGO Wind of Renewables, uh, 
also the University of Cadiz and the Secretariat für Zukunft Forschung, they joined forces and they carried out a feasibility study in the Greek region of Attica and the Spanish province of Cadiz to see uh, how uh, training young people could actually uh, also uh, fight climate change and also promote the European energy transition. We have the, uh, the we are very honored that all the three authors are here, sitting here, and uh, they could basically present some of the, the results of the studies. And also they developed a proposal on how to improve the European Youth Guarantee uh, so that uh, these young people also are offered uh, long-term employment possibilities and so that we can better interconnect the sustainable energy transition process at European level and the huge unemployment at European level and also achieve better prosperity. Uh, so uh, it is my pleasure to uh, invite now the, the speakers or the authors of the study. Uh, so first of all, this is Hardwick uh, Berger, uh, who has, uh, he's uh, also, um, um, he, uh, he, he's a former uh, deputy in the Berlin Parliament, and also he has also carried out uh, uh, part of this study. Then we have Fran Francisco Sanchez de la Flor, who is a professor at the University of Cadiz, uh, and he has been particularly involved with the um, Spanish case study in southern Spain. And also we have Nikos uh, Crisogelos, who is a former Green MEP, and he was also a co-founder of the NGO Wind of Renewables. And he was involved in particularly uh, in the Green Case Study uh, in the Attic region. So uh, first of all, we have a presentation of the study, and then we'll continue with the panel discussion. And I would like to invite uh, the speakers. Something else, the, this event will be web-streamed. So I also would also like to use the occasion to welcome those of you who are following us online. And uh, just to announce that uh, after, the, after this event, the feasibility study and the proposal will be sent to the participants so all of us could already access the, the results. Thank you very much. I will start where we are a trio, and uh, I'm very grateful that we, we have found because uh, for, for this uh, per project. And uh, thank you also for presenting al already the general idea of, uh, of our activity, the study, and uh, also afterwards some activities. We speak about PREPS 2 to combine uh, the fight against uh, youth uh, unemployment for with the fight against uh, climate projection. And uh, the, the, the general proposal to start with is, we think that it is uh, the, the young people, young European people are urgently needed. They are urgently needed for, 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 for this task. And um, I will give some results and uh, we will give together some results and proposals of uh, of our study, uh, which we made, uh, it was only a feasibility study. It was for us, it is a starting point for doing more. It <coughs> was a feasibility study we made last year in, in Greece, in, in the region of Athens, and we made in, in, in the province of Cardiff in, in Andalusia, and there mostly in, in rural towns, uh, in rural towns there, because we know that there is uh, the problem of youth unemployment yet more urgent. And it was realized, you told all, all, all already about, and um, now I will give you the reason that we have chosen these uh, regions. Um, this, uh, the first is uh, one positive. We think that just the region, uh, regions in, in southern Europe um, have, have, there is a, a energy transition to climate-friendly solution is necessary, is necessary, seen the waste of energy in, in the buildings, in the economy, and all this, and is also possible, possible seen the, 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 the much better conditions uh, than in, uh, in, in, in Northern Europe, for example, for solar, solar energy. These were the, and the second reason, yes, uh, this is only to explain 
this is one uh, poster from our study we did, but the study was also with public work, as yes, we discussed with, uh, I will not explain all the methodics of the study, but we discussed there with, uh, wi with uh, stakeholders, uh, with professors, with politicians, but also with very much young, uh, very much young, and therefore uh, I put this poster best because we had a call to participate in, in the discussion and in evaluating the results. And the other uh, um, poster is from our uh, warmer project. Perhaps you will speak something about this afterwards. We are accomplishing no, uh, uh, in, in, in training young energy experts for changing schools in just in these reasons I spoke about in a climate friendly sense. But about this project, I will not speak about. Now uh, you put the next. Uh, Yes, the next. Uh, uh, you, you gave all already the ciphers of the of the youth unemployment. These are the regions of uh, relatively nearly highest youth unemployment, unemployment in general, and youth unemployment in in in, in Europe. And um, you know that uh, youth unemployment is not uh, only a static system, but it is uh, much of the people are working, but are declared unemployed because uh, they are working illegally, but they are working in very bad conditions if you work illegally without insurance. And other people are, are working, are working, they are declared as, as working, but uh, given the, the difficult situation, uh, in the they're working in, 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 in irregular conditions. For example, only they have to work whole day, but they are declared for two days, or they work without insurance and, and something like this. Therefore, it's a, it's a very urgent, urgent problem. And um, yes, and, and therefore it is sensible to look just in, in this region if uh, the energy transition could open a perspective. And um, now put the next. Uh, you know, we had uh, um, some key questions I, I put there. We don't speak about all. The first question, the employment chances, it is mostly which will do, uh, it's, it's your task, uh, Fran, to speak about, and the future op opportunities. And But uh, we uh, had also an analysis about the current deficits, because uh, yes, there, there is training and education, also in energy questions, in 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 southern Spain and uh, and in Greece, but there are deficits. But we will not elaborate this. But it is interesting. We think uh, you must change also the education system. One possible model model maybe one should not copy it. The dual formation we have in 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 in, 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 in Germany, in the same thing that they are that you are working parallel in in, in the theory and in the praxis, but not only in the praxis as dependent in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an enterprise, but also you should be trained how to can empower you, how you can uh, take uh, own works, how to ca can look for own works, because energy transition is a creative task. It's not only you, you cannot wait, there will be an enterprise. Perhaps you must create an enterprise, therefore, but I will not elaborate this point, but it was important for us to look not also um, what are the necessities and opportunities for, for training, but how you can uh, um, change a little uh, the training system too. And yet, and uh, this is, um, this were the key questions. Afterwards, we will speak also about the proposals we have on European level, but now it's uh, mostly important to sp speak about the first question, the current employment chances of youngsters. And uh, one of the best experts for Sunspan I know is uh, Fran, and you uh, are at work. Uh, so you you, you must situation, the situation properly. Ah, yes, if you like. No problem. Um, me? Yes, OK. Um, if you speak about climate change, the most of people think about energy and think only about renewable energy and energy efficiency. This is true, but it's not the whole story. And this is um, what happens now with politicians in Greece. We have different problems, like fiscal problem and economic <coughs> problems. We have social problems. We, we have high unemployment, uh, high unemployment. And uh, we have also environmental issues there. So what is the current policy? 
uh, they try to uh, develop solutions if they do it, but in a sep in a way that the, the policies are contradiction. For example, uh, we have high unemployment of young persons that usually are high uh, educated persons from polytechnic schools. They can work for new ideas, but these people are unemployed. They are not well trained, and they stay outside of the society and economy and many of them leave the country and go to Belgium, Germany or France or uh, everywhere to implement the, their studies and be engineers or renewable energy or energy efficiency or communication or things like this. We have a high rate of uh, energy poverty and how we tackle this problem uh, the government gives some subsidies to these ha families to pay the cost for oil. So this policy is against climate policy and against uh, social policy because they don't reduce poverty, energy poverty, they increase the consumption of oil and the next year we need more money. To conclude, we spend more than 2 billion euros every year for subsidies for uh, heating based on oil, the production of energy, electrical energy on islands based on oil, uh, CO2 emissions, permissions and so on, and social policies without any result, any performance. So if we speak about transition, and we have to see all together how we can create jobs for energy efficiency of households suffering on energy poverty, how we can use a social policy based on investments, social and green investments, instead of um, subsidies, and how we can also improve the education in the universities, in schools, in uh, vocational training, because now we don't have uh, people who are in between the very, very um, high educated people and the workers. So if you are an entrepreneur in Greece, you cannot find such people to be uh, trained uh, properly to act as, for example, uh, uh, management of wind powers, for uh, windmill powers. So we need two directions, two uh, policies, but also training on new jobs that are not existed. And there are many, not only on energy, but also social science, uh, communication, uh, legal system and so on. But we need also improvement of the training and education in the schools because the electricians are trained on an old system. All the networks are of the past. The mining experts are working for mining of lignite. They are not urban uh, mining experts. So we have to uh, work to both directions. Uh, well, uh, well, thank you very much for the for the um, for the presentation and for the invitation to be here. It's a it's our honor, no, to be here. Uh, well, uh, if you want, uh, we uh, please uh, go back to the to the okay. previous one. Just yes, to that to that one. Yes, to that one. It's just to to present this uh, second part of the of the of the slide presentation. Uh, we had divided the, the slide presentation into three parts. Uh, firstly, uh, we uh, Harvey and Nikos, my my colleagues, in the in the in this project uh, and in this in this fight, we can say uh, they have present the social uh, the social view of the of the same problem. Uh, we are talking about energy transition, but. Uh, we had to to take into account that this is more than any other uh, more than any other thing. This is a social issue, a social uh, point of view. Is what is important from my from my view as well. Uh, but uh, let me open a, a slight parenthesis. I don't want to to bore you, but uh, let me open a slight parenthesis just to present the energy point of view the other phase and uh, with the intention that uh, that facing facing the energy transition we can try to to face at the same time another very uh, worry uh, problem that we have that is the youth unemployment it's a it's a 
Mm, it's a problem that we have in many in many areas of of Europe, of course. Uh, it's a problem that we have, uh, especially in our regions. Uh, but now, from now uh, till the end of the presentation, instead of talking about problems, let's talk about opportunities. Is is the vis the vision I want to to, to translate uh, from now and, uh, and behind? So please let's continue. So how to uh, to see this opportunity where first of all probably is missing uh, 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 is missing an, a previous uh, slide just to 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 remind you that uh, in terms of energy consumption there are three main sectors three main sectors in terms of energy consumption that are can be it's just to summarize no uh, can be the uh, transport can be the industry and can be the building sector there are others, of course, but uh, mainly we have these three main sectors. And let me only focus now in this presentation, let me focus only in the building sector. Obviously, uh, there are many, many things to, to, to say about the others, but let me uh, just to focus on that. And once talking about uh, the building sector, uh, and we are uh, looking for a solution of in terms of uh, energy transition, Okay, and then at the end, obviously, to reduce uh, uh, emissions due to, to that energy consumption. Uh, the first question that arises is why why the building sector is responsible in uh, of that problem, and uh, what are the reasons behind that energy consumption? To know the reason, obviously, we had to go to uh, to slides like this. Sorry, it's in Spanish dialect, but it's very easy to understand. I think. There are, uh, among the buildings, we, we can make a classification in two main groups. One is the residential, and the other can be the tertiary buildings, like this, bu that, like this building, for instance. So, uh, but there is a, a, common, a, common, um, a common facility that for both kinds of buildings, uh, can be the the major problem that we have and is how to provide heating in winter cooling in summer there are others there are other uh, energy facilities energy consuming facilities of course in the building depending on which kind of building but for both the main reason is the uh, is at the end the objective to get thermal thermal comfort uh, inside no inside the building so uh, so, well, of course, there are many uh, European efforts and national efforts trying to decrease the, the, that energy consumption for many other. Now, now we are going to focus to that specific problem, the specific problem uh, related to, the, to, to providing uh, heat or cool, depending on the, on the weather, depending on the, on the period of the year. And there are many European initiatives. There are many European directives. The the what is the the probably the the, the most well known uh, directive in that sense is the uh, the energy performance of buildings directive. Uh, this is the the second the second one, the recast or the or the previous. And uh, well, here we have a mandate that is is very clear. By the end of last year, by the end of last year, new buildings occupied and owned by public authorities should be very close to the near what is well it has been defined as nearly zero energy buildings. But very soon, uh, by uh, 2020, all new buildings, not only for public but for private as well. So that's an objective really really challenging it's an objective very ambitious i agree that's uh, the way that uh, to to get the final objective and, and ha um, high objective to get the to to reduce the co2 the emission that's the way i i think it's a it's a good thing of course to to have a, a so ambitious objective but then a new question arises that is how is how we are going to achieve that objective let's let's continue <coughs> so well this is this is um with the permission of uh, the Fraunhofer institute this is um a view a roadmap that they propose 
several years ago, five or six, several years ago. What I can say is that we are still far to follow this roadmap. Is is the roadmap uh, uh, that is recommending? Yes, very quickly, of course. Is 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 a roadmap recommending that uh, every member state has to put a very strict regulation in order to 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 get that objective. Let's continue. So, I, I would like to end my presentation in this part and then and then to 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 look for uh, uh, last questions. So. What is what is our view, our technical view? I don't want to enter in all the details, but uh, our view is if we want to get that ambitious final objective, we have to fo follow a certain order, and we don't. Uh, it is not possible to forget any of the steps of the different steps. The first step is that if we want to decrease the energy consumption in a building, the first step is that the design of the building itself has to be proper has to be properly designed and uh, in order to reduce the the needs the energy needs for for, for that cooling or that heating another uh, the second step could be that at the end the building is not what is consuming energy what is consuming the energy for the building is the facility so the facility in this case the HVAC facility the heating uh, ventilation and cooling uh, facility that facility wh what is the, the the main source of uh, main sink we can say of energy is uh, has to be very well designed uh, so we need uh, to improve the performance of the energy system the first step is that the the energy use in systems in buildings has to be optimized optimized in, in very very wide uh, view of that don't want to enter in detail. And finally, and only finally, if we want to reverse the balance, then we have to provide the the energy that is uh, still needed by the by the building. The energy that is uh, still needed now is going to be uh, lower, but it's uh, still need. Uh, we still need uh, a certain amount of energy that has to be provided by renewable sources. So, for those uh, steps, the second question is. Who can do it? This is what we think that has to be done. And now the the, the next question is who can do it? And then if yes. you want to finalize the question. Thank you very much. But we have only 20 minutes and we are highly interested in the discussion. We have political proposals on European level. Uh, but I uh, well we 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 think we will discuss it in the in the panel if you if you agree if you yes. agree I, I could uh, speak much more but it's better uh, to put in discussion because what can we do on European level this is our uh, interest one yes or two sentences of conclusions okay. maybe for okay. your, for yes. your side put the last to the last in this after yes yes it's a, it's a general proposal but I can explain it afterwards <laughs> no I think that there is another one no? the no, yeah. ah, yes, uh, these are these are the concrete, more concrete. But put the put the old, put the old one for the discussion. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, you can stay for a while because we'll we'll give the opportunity ah, for yes. the audience to ask yes. clarification. So thank you very much, uh, mm. Nikos, Franciscus, and Hartwig. Uh, so first of all, we can collect a couple. If you have any questions before we engage into the discussion, only on the study, like. Uh, any clarification questions um, that you would like to ask? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we will continue with the discussion. But okay, uh, so maybe yeah. Then I would like to invite the panelists. So uh, Hartwig uh, yes. would join us for the for the panel, and uh, Florent uh, Marcellesi already arrived. Uh, Green MEP at the European Parliament, working on energy and gender. Uh, then we uh, we have Mariana Georgialis. Uh, she's um, a policy officer at DG Employment at the European Commission. And finally, we have but uh, the speaker Zhuzhana Pavelkova. Okay. Uh, so we have a uh, representation from the from a youth organization. She's from the Federation of uh, Young European Greens. Um, many things, and uh, 
Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, and then uh, so the last uh, speaker is Ignacio Doreste Hernandez. So he's uh, from the European Trade Union Confederation. So uh, thank you very much for coming. Um, so um, so we'll start with yeah. So basically, thank you very much for for these interesting presentations. You had a special proposal on the. European Youth Guarantee, maybe we'll come to Marianne, uh, because you have been involved in particularly in the youth, uh, European Guarantee. Uh, do you have, uh, by DG Employment, this kind of link between the energy transition and the European Youth Guarantee? And um, after applying the youth European Guarantee, do you have any kind of reports or results about how it was applied in different member states or any strategy or any kind of target groups that uh, that it would like to reach? Could you give us some overview? Sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation, uh, first of all, and for making this very important link between two very big challenges that, that we currently face. Um, so as Radosina said, I work in DG employment on, on, on youth employment policy and have been following the youth guarantee since its inception in 2013. So maybe a quick uh, overview. The youth guarantee was uh, agreed to um, by EU member states in 2013 and it basically uh, is a commitment to ensure that all young people uh, have an offer of a, a job a traineeship, an apprenticeship, or a return to further education if needed within four months of coming out of school or becoming unemployed. Um, so it's now been six years, uh, more or less, uh, <coughs> that this has been being implemented in member states. Um, and what we see is that uh, the impact it is having uh, is that it's changing a bit the approach to youth employment policy in member states. Um, we all know, of course, that the numbers are getting better, uh, the figures, as it were, that the NEAT rate is, is going down, uh, that youth unemployment is going down more in some member states than in others. So the problem still very much persists. But what we see um, that the youth guarantee has contributed to is that it's really it's put the focus on um, a preventative approach, on uh, outreach towards young people, so a more proactive uh, policy, let's say, towards dealing with youth unemployment. And it's slowly changing the kind of structures in place. Um, there are a lot of, uh, it has been implemented through a variety of measures, so both through structural reforms, so we see some member states where um, apprenticeship systems, vocational education and training systems have been reformed and changed as a result of the youth guarantee or through the trigger of the youth guarantee to make them more relevant to, to the current labour market. Um, and we also see you know, hiring subsidies, uh, a, a, common, uh, a common implementation of the youth guarantee, but as well um, outreach measures. So going out to, to, to young people that are inactive, that have uh, more of a distance to the labor market and to labor market institutions, um, and approaching them in collaboration with, with different organizations. And this is something that I believe the youth guarantee has really helped to, to, to kind of uh, change the, the culture in terms of pushing forward uh, this idea of working in partnerships. This is with uh, social partners, with trade unions, uh, with youth organizations as well, uh, which are espe especially referred to in, in the recommendation as a key actor. Um, so it's, it's pushed for kind of collaborating across uh, a wide range of, of, of organizations in order to get to those young people that need it, need the support the most. Um, as, a, as figures, because we all want to know in numbers uh, how, how things are developing, uh, every year uh, 3.5 million young people are uh, affected by the youth guarantee, are enrolled in the youth guarantee. This is every year since 2014. Um, and uh, the funding which was accompanying the proposal, the Youth Employment Initiative, uh, has to date directly supported uh, about 2.2 million young people. Uh, 
So these are some kind of core uh, core facts which which are positive, but as I say from 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 my perspective, uh, the biggest impact has been on changing mentalities and changing the general policy approach uh, to youth employment in the member states. Many thanks, uh, Mariana. Uh, so we're going to. Um Florent, uh, currently the negotiations on the multiannual financial framework are still ongoing and uh, this could be an important tool to fund such initiatives. According to you, how the next EU budget should be designed in a way that could fill in this gap or um, or it already, yeah, what kind of mechanisms could be used in order to help this? Yeah, thank you very much. Well, maybe before talking about funding, we should talk about vision. I think that's the first thing that we have to do because first we have to, to, to give an answer to all the young people that we are seeing right now in the streets. I think that's the first thing because they ask a vision. They don't ask just the money. They have to say, hey, where are we going? That's a wake up call that we need right now. And the, the first thing I think that they say, and I think that the trade union will be, we agree with that because that's their slogan too, that there is no jobs on a dead planet. That's the first thing that we have to recall. Those, that's not <coughs> something about funding, about money, about jobs. That's something about life, about living in this planet. I think that's the first thing that we have to recall. But the, the second thing is that climate, as you said before, is an opportunity. That's an opportunity. That's right. Climate change is an opportunity. We have to see the positive things. Well, not the things that are going outside right now. <coughs> but when you see the, the positive things, I think you're totally right. If you see the jobs, there is much more jobs right now in the green sectors, in the green economy, than in the black economy than before. There is much more. And that's not the green people saying that. Everybody's saying that. Scientists, people from university, the trade world organizations, we all know that. We need to have green economy to have some new jobs. That's true for young people, and that's true for older people. That's true for everybody. And if that's true for young people, that's quite clear that what we need is training for young people. You have to train the people to be in the right sectors in the future. That's quite clear. And that's true too for the youth guarantee. As you said, you have to link both things, youth guarantee <coughs> and sustainable for, for the future. And that's the point that you said before, and I very agree on that, and that's about vision, that's about the coherence. We have to be coherent in all policies that we have. For example, we can do two, two different examples, one very global and one more uh, local based on what you said before. The first uh, example is, how come can you vote a trade agreement, as a CETA, for example, raising the emissions? And at the same time, doing the clean energy package, we all locked a lot, wanted to down the emissions. That's not current at all. What are you doing on the side? You did do on the other side. I don't understand that, really. That's one of the most important debates that we have with, uh, with the European Commission, for example. You work for that, but you do something on the other side that is nothing, nothing to see. That's true in the trade agreement, but that's always true in, for example, the EPPD, the Energy Performance Building Directive that you talk about with your example. <laughs> that's true, that's, that's a good thing. I was the shadow rapporteur for the Greens for this, uh, for this file. And that's true, in this file, for example, we ask for the near zero energy building, and that's a good thing. But just let's think about one thing. If you just look at the building, isolated building, without thinking about the system, that makes no sense. Because you can achieve, for example, a very good near zero energy building, very good, uh, well done, well isolated, well, whatever you want. But if this building, for example, is located very far, for example, for the center, very far for everything, schools, commercial center, for example, and you have to take your car for everything, well, I think you didn't do your job because that's not coherent. That's why, for example, we put in the directive too, and that was something from the Greens that we put there, the near zero energy district. You have to think about ecosystem. That's about ecosystem. And that's about coherence. Do the same thing in all the politics. And for example, that's something that we ask right now to be coherent in the MFF. Because the MFF is not coherent with that. So you need to put funds. But you need to put funds when you have a vision. Put funds on this vision that we ask. Not just put funds to do something sectoral in, on that kind that's green, but on the other thing I will put some funds for the fossil fuels, for example, or gas. I don't understand the point. 
So that's something that we said this morning to the European Commission, not to you <laughs> exactly, but to the representative, representative of the European Commission. We don't understand how you can talk about the Paris Agreement on the way, and at the same time to finance some more gas infrastructure. So you can put all the youth pe young people working on the climate change, but at the same time, you did do what you're doing on the other way. So I think that's the key point of all of that. And just to, to finish uh, on something that we have to add, that's the gender vision. That's the gender vision. And that's, I think, most, more important because I think that you, you know that tomorrow that will be the International Day of Women and we will have a strike, not only in Spain, that was the first country to do that uh, last year, but this year that will be a strike tomorrow here in Belgium and I hope that all women, because a strike for women most of all, and I hope that they, you will do because there is a very important gender aspect in the climate change fight. Because we, we know, we perfectly know that, <coughs> who is doing most of all climate change, most of all, that's a men. The carbon footprint of men is much more important than women. But who suffers most of all impact of climate change? That's women in the south, southern countries, but also in Europe. When you talk, for example, of heat waves, when you talk about uh, energy poverty, that's women. And who decides the climate policies? Most of all, that's men. So we have to put that, and that's always, uh, uh, also true for young, for young people. So you have to put this gender approach in the climate change fight, because we have to be intersectorial. We have to be cross-sectorial when you think about everything. Young people, climate change, and gender. And that's the only way to have a very coherent vision. Thank you. Many thanks, Laurent. Talking about vision and youth, um, Susanna, how do young people see their role in the um, European energy transition process? And uh, um, and do you think that the European Youth Guarantee is also an effective tool to uh, also to to tackle this issue from f uh, from the perspective of the youth? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for, for inviting me to this debate. Uh, I think it would be actually very interesting to go and ask the people who are striking uh, on the streets of Brussels and many other parts of Belgium uh, today. Um, but uh, first of all, I want to thank the, the authors uh, of the study. I read uh, bits and pieces in preparation for this debate and I found it very interesting because we as Young Greens have been working quite intensively with this notion of just transition. Because for us, really, the ecological is not fulfilled without the social. And I think it's really nice to have a, a concrete example of what a just transition can look like in practice. Um, and I know that also, for example, in, um, in Germany there have been um, some experiments with trying to transition not, not young people but people who are already employed in uh, the coal mining industry and to transition them towards, um, towards uh, uh, renewables. And I think we need more of those studies. We need to really understand how we can also engage uh, unions, how we can engage uh, trade unions, how we can engage student unions in this process. And I think this study is, is a very good uh, starting point. Uh, and I think we see that this narrative of combining the environmental with the social is really working. If we look uh, to the US, what Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is doing is exactly that. Uh, talking about the Green New Deal, talking about how this big transition, this big task of which we have in front of us of fighting the climate crisis can be actually combined, combined with creating jobs. So really giving it, uh, giving it a positive vision so that the future of, of where we fight climate change doesn't need to be a, a scary future. It doesn't need to be a future of, of scarcity and of limited opportunities. It can be actually quite the contrary. Um, and I think we, we don't actually need to go only to the US. We can also look at Europe. Uh, because if we look at the Yellow West movements, some people have said that these people are actually opposing um, ecological measures. But I think that's a rather limited understanding. They're opposing environmental measures which are not socially just. That's what they are opposing. Um, so I think it's really, very good to have these concrete examples. Uh, by the way, I really liked uh, Florent's intervention on gender. Thank you very much for that. Uh, and now about the youth guarantee. So the youth guarantee is definitely a very good tool and it's a tool which can be further improved. It's not enough for young people to get, get them only employment. We need quality employment and we need employment 
which provides a secure and stable income. Uh, because employment without income, I cannot buy my food and I cannot pay my rent with experience. And unfortunately, now in Europe, we have this culture of unpaid internships, of things like youth wages, which is essentially um, a permission for the employer to pay to a young person even less than what is a minimum wage. I personally do not understand how this is not a discrimination based on age. So I think in order to improve the youth guarantee, we also need to look at quality of the employment offered and, and on the payment. And that goes as well for uh, the training. We cannot just park young people in some training opportunities if, those tr if the training doesn't provide them for income. Because those young people who are today not taking part in the training are probably not taking part in, in, in further education because they cannot afford it. So that would be my contribution. Many thanks, Susanna. Uh, so, um, Ignacio, uh, we, we already, everyone emphasized uh, on the role of the socially just uh, transition. Um, according to you, how we could achieve a socially just transition um, in, the energy s and, uh, in the energy sector in Europe that is also climate friendly and that is also involving this young group of people? Uh, what is the position of uh, the European Trade Union Confederation on this issue? Thank you very much. Uh, yes, indeed, the, the trade union movement in Europe, um, also at international level, have been supporting for many years the concept of just transition. And it has not been easy to have this acknowledged in, in the UN the 2030 development goals. It has also not been uh, easy for us to get on board of this strategy all our constituency, so to speak. So for many of our colleagues um, uh, who were extremely concerned about uh, the loss of their jobs, uh, we really had to uh, discuss with them to let them understand that the concept of just transition, that, as it has uh, already been perfectly explained, is this idea of not letting the workers behind in the fight against uh, climate change. Uh, so for us, uh, fighting against the climate change is a number one priority, uh, but of course we don't want that uh, workers are, are left behind. Um, so we are putting forward a um, broad um, uh, strategy. Uh, upskilling has already been mentioned, but also trade unions have a role to play in defining overall climate and energy strategies. They also have through their right to consultation and negotiation, the um, capacity to, to, to negotiate the economic and industrial strategy of, of the company. We have been uh, compiling lots of best practice uh, at this regard uh, throughout Europe. In, I mean, the Greece has already been mentioned, uh, in France, in Germany, in the Nordic countries for sure. Um, of course, I mean, this remained uh, a challenge. Uh, we see that uh, we have the political framework, so it could also uh, be improved. Uh, we are the uh, we are also aligned with what has already been said about the lack of coherence of many of our European policies. But uh, there is an already existing legal framework. Uh, for example, in the energy package of the um, European Commission, reference were made to the need to uh, involve the social partners in the design of a, a energy strategies seeking to um, a transition from coal energy, CO2 energies to green energies. Um, but th there is a gap between the, the, the law and the implementation of the law or the mm, political strategy. Uh, and this gap could also apply to the youth guarantee. The European trade union movement has been uh, supporting the, the youth guarantee from its very beginning, actually, we were the first one to support such a measure at European level, uh, which was born in the Nordic countries in the 90s, and it was, by the way, the outcome of social dialogue between the employers and the and the um, and the unions. Uh, so we, we have been supporting this with from the very beginning. Uh, of course, we have remained critical with its implementation, but uh, we have already transmitted to the European Commission that uh, we are an ally in the implementation of the youth guarantee. But of course, for us, 
uh, we remained really concerned about the quality of the offers provided. And on this, the European Commission also agrees in the last evaluation that they have uh, produced. Um, so it's true that in terms of the numbers, uh, things seem to be nice, but when it comes to the quality of the employment, no, not only the employment, there are three strands. We have a training, a traineeship and employment. Uh, the quality is, is not good, unfortunately. Um, so what is the problem? I mean, we have the political framework, uh, but then there is this gap always. Well, there is a question of short-term view and eagerness of uh, capital, I would say. So uh, this is perfectly explained when it comes to environmental policies, I believe. When we have been evaluating many times hand in hand with the commission, uh, but from a trade union perspective, the implementation of the youth guarantee, we have been calling for quality measures. Uh, and what do we refer with quality? Well, a quality uh, offer given to a young need uh, is that one in which um, uh, for example, in terms of employment, uh, we have a well-paid job with health and safety uh, provisions. There is the right to uh, organize and to and to negotiate. Uh, but then the the quality, the, the employment uh, should be sustainable. I mean, the, uh, we cannot defend the uh, um, uh, jobs which are not uh, sustainable, which are based on the uh, destructive. Uh, energy production systems. Mm, something which has been mentioned by Mariana is the fact that uh, the European Commission identified that something like 85% or around so of the measures uh, within the youth guarantee has been uh, directed to uh, subsidize jobs, which is something that we are not against uh, as such, but of course, subsiding any job, we are against that because Many of our members have been telling us that the jobs which have been supported within the youth guarantee are not of good quality in terms of the duration. Our, for example, our colleagues from Italy, they have been extremely critical on the fact that the youth guarantee has been misused by bad employers because, of course, we always have good employers and we don't want to be that uh, naive. So many bad employers have been misusing the youth guarantee in order to replace uh, already existing good quality jobs. And uh, we have constantly been calling to the um, uh, alignment of the youth guarantee with a productive system which is sustainable in terms of uh, quality and respect of the of the environment and as I said this is unfortunately lacking but of course we we have uh, always I mean given this situation which is negative we can also see this as an opportunity for a change many thanks Ignacio uh, Hartwig you already developed uh, in your study based on the conclusions some proposals on how to improve the European Youth Guarantee and because a major issue which was addressed now is also the quality of jobs, not only that we subsidize some jobs, but that the people really have the perspective and the long-term vision to be involved in this sector and have also stability for them. So based on, on the results of the study and the case studies, what was your conclusion? What were the, were the major barriers and how do you suggest afterwards to improve uh, this? Th th thank you very much. Now I will not uh, explain all the specific proposals we have for, for different uh, work disciplines. It, it is important, but uh, now in the discussion, b before uh, speaking about youth guarantee, I, I will give you uh, some, I will uh, com combine this uh, idea of the just tran transition. In speaking in general, if we will convince with a European idea, young people, we must campaign the social and the ecological question. We, the okay, social, you have there Friday for Futures. Is, uh, the, the young people, they have the future. They have to suffer from the climate cr crisis. We only a little now. But in 20, 30 years, what we miss today, that are suffering. The young people, which are, we are, I'm older, I'm, I'm not living yet, yes, but they are suffering from this. They are convinced. Them. And the other thing, that you have to, to convince them, there's a social question that they have a future there too. And I think, therefore, in the, in the, the youth guarantee of the activity of the, of the, of the European Union, to, to look uh, to, to uh, give an obligation, it's, it's uh, really an obligation to the, to the member states to give uh, the, the, the young people 
work after four months uh, they out work or or in 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 training program this you could uh, and and should combine uh, with w with this uh, idea you said you are right um, i'm not so uh, informed uh, good to inform but you say that uh, analysis of the of the of syndicalists had the result uh, that much is only uh, subventioning um, sub substitution of work yes uh, and and not real new work the problem is if you have the youth guarantee with the, in the, in the existing condition you don't create new work only from the youth guarantee you don't create new work you must combine it with a, with a policy uh, you, uh, you said it. No, I, I don't contradict to you, Mariana. You must combine it with the uh, with the idea. Where the future? What is necessary in for 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 a sustainable future in, in Europe? And and therefore you you should look. Uh, it's okay. It's very good that you think about in the European Commission that we must change the culture. It's not only, you say, that change the mentality and the culture, not only be on the same level, but to look. Um, and I think uh, it's it's difficult for me. Uh, you can give more money, but this is not sufficient from the European Union. You have now to, to, uh, two, million, uh, two billion more until 2020. But it's not a question of money. It's a question to give impulses to the member states of give obligation to the member states that they don't only look, oh, we have their job, they can work uh, two years and afterwards we don't know. But to look just in, in, this, uh, in this work, um, uh, departments w w which, uh, which which are necessary, and you know this is also another cult culture of 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 education of, of formation of the young. You cannot uh, only say you learn something and afterwards you will copy this. Energy transition and m many tasks of 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 climate protection, climate adaptation. This needs creative work. You you must uh, be able uh, to create new ideas. You must be able to 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 realize the new ideas. Therefore, the the young people should be trained also in a productive manner. You sp spoke about proactive. Yes, it's a good word. Uh, in in a proactive manner, they must be trained in a proactive manner um, to to create their own jobs to, to create their own enterprise or to create uh, cooperatives in, in a solidarity econo economy. And therefore I think the youth guarantee is a chance uh, to change um, um, if it change more in the in the perspective of a development uh, the sustainable development and to train young people just in professions with this relation, this, this would be the good idea. And this is our general proposal, yes? Sorry, uh, I must excuse that I will not give all the, uh, all the uh, good and interesting professions which could be trained, but this is a question of, uh, of realizing it and we could spar spar speak about this on another opportunity. Thanks, Harvid. Uh, Mariana, would you like to respond to some of these comments? Yes, I think you all saw me kind of nodding profusely. So um, I, I fully agree uh, with what a lot of the panel, all of the panelists have said on, on the quality of the offers under the youth guarantee, on making sure that it's not just kind of hiring subsidies that don't lead to sustainable employment. This is something that we from the Commission side have been really trying to support member states to, to, to ensure that especially now that the kind of crisis I is over I in terms of you know having those staggeringly high numbers all over Europe now we need to think really about what kind of jobs these are and what kind of you know sustainable uh, link these young people can have to, to the labor market um, I wanted to also bring in another kind of thought which is we in a recent eurobarometer um, climate change was uh, for young people voted as the second most important <laughs> shall I continue or do we leave or <laughs> okay I continue for now then um, 
Uh, in, a, in a recent year, your barometer of young people's views on, on the EU, climate change uh, was, was voted as the second most important uh, for them after education and skills. So clearly, young people are engaged. They care. We see this for those that are from Brussels. We've seen this for the past Thursdays. Young people are leaving school and protesting on the streets, specifically about climate action. But I wonder whether there is a bit of a missing link because I wonder whether these young people know the kind of jobs that are out there for them that will be relevant for their kind of passion on, on environmental activism. I, I don't know if our education system is necessarily bridging that link between what young people care about and also the jobs that will be out there in the future and also informing young people that in order to carry on your kind of environmental activism, you can do this as your profession, but you need to train in this. You need to train in that. You know, I don't know if that link is quite there. And that responsibility, I think, is on our education system, on youth organizations, on public employment services, um, to, to be able to kind of make that link between this, this need there that we have in the future, this motivation on the part of young people, and then to kind of guide them into the right jobs and the right skills and the right trainings. That's a kind of broader thought that, that kind of came to mind as we were discussing a bit. Thank you very much. I would like now to open the debate to the public. Uh, so we would like to collect a couple of questions for the audience. Oh, ah, yes, and the lady over there and then the gentleman there. Hi. Uh, this one. David Abiago from Argus, a uh, journalist. I had a question for Florent. Um, so a lot of what we talked about is the policies and uh, different ways of juggling things in, in order to push forward climate change. But there are a lot of issues where there's just no way to touch it. I mean, to take one, one aspect is emissions, the amount of emissions coming from aviation. So they're going to increase. We know that. And we know uh, yeah, emissions are going to decrease in other areas. But there's no possibility of changing that because it's unanimity. So even if you had Luxembourg, I, I think at the last Environment Council, Luxembourg, Sweden, um, Belgium, um, Netherlands, even France a little bit, saying that we need to tax um, fuel, jet fuel. But there's no, there's no way of changing that if one member state, I, I don't know, you could imagine it, uh, Germany or, or whatever, think of the member state and it will block <laughs> that. And it's blocked for 10, 10 15 years again. Um, and taxation is such an important part of how you push forward change and it's not to be pessimistic but it's just <laughs> there's nothing you can do you can you can go back to the parliament after the elections get re-elected and do a resolution but it, it's not going to change anything i mean i don't know if this is a question or a point or <laughs> or whatever but Hi, Sarah Vargas from uh, Solar Heat Europe. Um, I would like to know if this study is available online for anyone to find, yes, <coughs> okay. And then uh, Dr. Berger said that uh, he wouldn't go into the uh, specific proposals that they had done in the study, but it would be interesting to know uh, more about a couple of them, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay, do you have a question, or, uh, two questions there, and then we'll go back to the panel. <coughs> Hello, Florian Klee from Eurocities. Uh, I'd also like to grab up the question you just asked because. Um, okay. Yes. Um, okay. Yes. Let me draw the question to you when it comes to the feasibility study. Did the study in the end or now lead to any concrete projects on the ground with policy decision makers, public, local authorities in Spain or in Greece? Did they pick up your results? Is there anything in the pipeline? that will be implemented, uh, implemented um, yeah, in concrete, practical projects on the ground. My question. Hi, my name is Shari, the Center for UI Constitutional Research, a think tank here in Brussels. Um, first of all, thank you for arranging this because we are connecting the dots between the uh, youth unemployment, climate change challenge, and uh, creating work. Uh, one uh, missing, probably, leg to this is global governance of climate, um, which is very fragmented. Uh, 
We don't know who is in charge in terms of what organization is the ultimate authority on climate change. That what are the consequences for if a member state violates, let's say it's India or China, or a member state like US just walks out of the climate change uh, conferences. Uh, and there is no international court for the climate. So on this topic, and especially for the youth, um, uh, we have a program in Greece this July that we are training from each continent to climate justice defenders, youth climate justice defenders, to come and be trained on governance, global governance of the climate. Uh, now my question, this was my <laughs> background, but my question is what do you think of uh, existing affairs of governing the climate change? Okay, so uh, we go back to the panel. Maybe we'll take the first question about the political dimension and the global governance. And uh, yes, <laughs> about uh, with Florent, yeah. And uh, there was something, a comment, can something be changed? <laughs> Thank you for this uh, <laughs> kindly task. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, the two questions, the global government said the question that you made before, that's very linked. It's very linked because, for example, on aviation, that we, what you said, and we can take the, uh, the, the, the example of the Paris Agreement, because the Paris Agreement is an intent to have a global governance on climate change. But what happened, for example, f with aviation in the Paris Agreement three years, four years ago? Well, aviation and shipping were outside of the Paris Agreement because that uh, was not accepted to put it inside. And as aviation and shipping are international things, they don't do, do not enter in the European legislation. So that's totally outside. That's the black hole. That's a black hole of the uh, of the governance, and that's a big problem because, as you said, if we don't reduce, because we have to reduce all the aviation thing, we won't meet the climate change uh, the climate change goals because that's a problem once more of vision because European commissions for example all the member states they just say we have to have some more flights and some more people flying well not that's not true that's exactly on the contrary we need less people to fly less people to fly and that's something that young people are saying in the streets right now if they say we don't want to go to demonstrations by flight we want to go to by train or by bikes well, that's a cultural change. And that's true, you're right. That's quite complicated to know how to do that because you have the member state, you have this uh, uh, unanimity thing that we have to change. That's why we want to have not unanimity on these big decisions, but to have majority, to can, uh, not to have a country, for example, doing that. And at the same time, you have to be very clear on, 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 your, on, on the... On the answer, you have to say that we need to change radically the way we move. And that's a cultural change, that's the mental change change, that's a social norms change. And that's something that's really, that's complicated to do. You're right, that's complicated. But you have to try to do it, at least. I don't have any answer for what you said. I don't have any answer. But you have to try to change your government to be able to change in your European Council. You have to try to be to change in the Paris Agreement, because I know that's the, the best agreement, but that's the only agreement that we have, and that's better than nothing. So you have to do something <laughs> over there. You have to change the young people in the school to be able to have some people just uh, with the new conscience to have to do that. You need to be able to change European Parliament <laughs> to have some better things. But that's an ecosystem exchange, and that's quite complicated to know how it, 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 it will evolve. Because you have some tipping point, too. You have to take into account that the system do not evolve like <laughs> lineal. That's a tipping point, and that's a very critical uh, system. So just try to do that you just try to do that and then maybe we will try we will succeed to change it but i you're right that's complicated i know that we all know that but just try that's all we can do right now and just send and do it maybe i would like um Zuzana to comment basically on the question how we can enable this system change and uh, what is then how young people could bring that forward also yeah, I think I want to comment a little bit on this idea of um, whether we of, of needing to convince young people. I don't think that we need to convince young people anymore. I think they are totally convinced. They are the ones who are on the streets. So who we actually do need to convince are the people who are currently in power, the politicians. I would even go as far as to say that it's not the young people who have started striking. It's the politicians who've been striking all this time 
who've been ignoring this big challenge, this fundamental challenge we are facing, possibly the biggest challenge we're facing right now, as a humanity. They've been ignoring that, they've been ignoring the scientists, and now the young people, they are fed up with that. They are fed up with not having a prospect of a future. And that brings me back to, to, to the gap that, that you mentioned. I mean, I cannot speak for, for the young people who are, who are now right now striking, but my bet is that they would say, you know, why should I actually be getting any training whatsoever right now if in 12 years I won't be able to change anything? If, and if in 12 years the window of opportunity to do something on the climate crisis is closed. So if in 12 years I don't have any future whatsoever, the best possible thing that I can do now is to be on the strike. And if, if we want them to go back to school and, and start training for, for jobs in the green economy, um, which is not my personal objective, I think they're actually best placed where they are right now, then we actually need to show them that we are very serious about the climate crisis and the politicians need to show them that they are doing something about it. Otherwise, they will stay on the streets and, and that's also good that they stay there. There was also a question about some concrete proposals in the studies and whether some of the projects have been implemented, so maybe you can... If you put the last, uh, last yes. poster... And then I will explain something from this. Yes, uh, no, no, put the, 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 the last. No, no, the last, uh, the really last. Yes, yes. Uh, I don't know. And, and, and after, uh, it's a lot, uh, yes, it's okay. No, when, uh, <laughs> let it, uh, let it, yes. Um, uh, perhaps it's a little different because I have, yeah, you know, there are different uh, proposals. One proposal is uh, we need uh, energy ad ad advisors at low level, at low level. Uh, this is one result. You know, we are just in, in the region we analyze, there are very much poor households. Uh, very much uh, poor households and and you can as said uh, as you told already uh, Nikos, you, you can put is uh, to give them money for for buying oil or you can uh, give them advices how to arrange uh, the household in, in consuming less energy and in using uh, renewables energy but for you using renewable energy you need something like a system of subvention of, 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 of microcredits but this is a, a, a promising perspective uh, said, uh, energy advisors on a, on a low level another uh, very, very promising pe pe perspective we found is what we call all around uh, all, all around solar expert, experts. I think in European level you say the big, uh, expression solateur, solateur, French expression. These are people which uh, not only know to install solar energy, but they know also to, to give uh, consults. Uh, they also, uh, they, who can plan, who can maintain, uh, they all combined, you, you, you can look for the financing system in this. And this is a very promising perspective just in the southern um, regions of Europe because you have, a, 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 with, a, with a solar irradiation you have, and with an, 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 an legal system, not this uh, from, from Rajoy, pardon, I, I beg your pardon, from, uh, but n not uh, in, in Spain, which give possibilities for solar prosuming, you saw production and, and, and consumption. And there's very important, the last uh, European directive, 2001, uh, from, from December, which um, gives the obligation for the member states to give good op opportunities for, for produce and, um, and, uh, and, and, and use uh, so solar energy. And, and this is, if, if this will be fulfilled in the member states, there will be very good perspectives also for poor households with microcredits to be solar prosumers. This is uh, one and other. Um, we, we had, we are already practicing is uh, the system of energy orders. Uh, we are spoke about Fran uh, beforehand. And we, in, in our next project, uh, we are fixed more on the, on the cooling system. You know, in all Southern European countries, most, also with the climate crisis, with the hotter summers, and in general, what you need is a system of cooling. And you can it make uh, in, in the destruction of climate with fossil energies, or you can make it only using uh, renewable energies 
and with natural techniques in, in green zones with water and something like this and uh, not using much energy and uh, then you can if you if you create jobs in this system they they have a future these are only some uh, but i will add another i think always about uh, i'm sorry we speaking always of uh, uh, qualified people in in in, in energy uh, but we have in just in the youth unemployment we have a large proportion of the people you call need which have neither education and neither training program these are people which are not so educated they they cannot work as uh, as as energy specialists you must look also for jobs uh, 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 which have a future and in the uh, area of climate protection and climate uh, uh, adaptation there are so much jobs where we need so much high qualification and you must develop uh, this uh, too in the system of youth guarantee and giving work and future perspective in the countries this is a part of uh, i think I, I could give more proposals we have developed more but that's only some and you should explain also a little the other question uh, if there were, was uh, pick up uh, our ideas and implemented there should answer Fran and and, uh, and Nikos, I think, but you are the experts in your region. Okay, uh, so uh, Francisco or Nikos, would you like to add something on the implementation? Um, I don't know how we can influence the politicians because they have this business as usual approach. Even if they have signed uh, many, many agreements and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, conventions and so on. This is the big issue. For example, uh, at the same time we discuss about climate change in Greece, we invest in oil and natural gas and the pity is that the European Union will support with uh, money all the uh, or part of the studies and then we discuss about an infrastructure that will bring uh, oil and gas from this area of East Mediterranean to Europe. But we we'll invest money there for a technology and option that w must be uh, stopped. It's crazy. Because they say, su in such a way, we will support the future of the young generation. Of course, it is f laughing, but this is the, the current policy. 70,000, 75,000 square kilometers for research and drilling of oil and gas. So this is European problem. We have to push the European Commission to stop funding and stop including such projects in their strategy because they say this is European strategy. It's not just Greek strategy or Cyprus strategy. This is a big issue. A second problem we have. Because of the crisis, there is no bank system who will support even small medium enterprises or cooperatives. So we have a lot of activities, but we are not able to have as wind of renewal. We are a social cooperative. We cannot have access even for a loan of 40,000 euros because they say do, you don't have profit. So you cannot have money and we are developed social cooperative. We have a hostel very innovative combining sustainable tourism with green economy, social economy, social inclusion and so on. And they see that is a big project and they say, no, you don't have profits. But how young persons can create a new company, cooperative or small medium, without, without access to such money, to such uh, tools? This is a big issue. Uh, because we discuss always about austerity, about taxes, but there are no tools for the exit out of the crisis. And so the people depend a lot on subsidies. And this is a big problem because then they, t they, they know or they want, but they are not able to start something innovative. It's very difficult. Of course, there are some startups, but this is uh, one uh, per million or <laughs> one per uh, 100,000 uh, persons, young persons. So we need system change. This is very important that if we don't have coherent policies, then it is impossible to discuss about new jobs. It's also training, it's also empowerment. For example, we have work, now there is a project, we train 11 persons in Greece, 11 persons in Spain, to do the job. Not just to discuss about the, the studies and our proposals, but 
we implement in daily life what we have proposed. And so this is something that we run at the moment. We are running at the moment. The second one is we try to have innovation in our approach. For example, okay, you have some technicians, they go to a household and they explain them how they can reduce energy. But this is not enough because these people are excluded. Many years are unemployed, they suffer on poverty and so on. So you have to empower the people. So you have to combine social and green innovation. It's not just some technicians who go there and support them, but you need to train them to be able to act as mentors and mobilize them, integrate them in the way of uh, exit of the crisis. Uh, how they can create a cooperative, for example. How they can do the job also with the uh, employment of people who are unemployed, but they, they can act as technicians, as builders, uh, energy uh, engineers, and so on. So we need more integrated approach, not just separated mm -hmm. sectors, but people who have new skills. So we can we try to combine social skills with technical skills, with energy knowledge. It is not enough to say, okay, the technicians go there and say, that, okay, uh, switch off the light or uh, I know change uh, your refrigerator or your doors and so on. But we need people who mobilize these people. 25% of our uh, people in Greece, uh, the citizens, are dependent on subsidies. They do nothing or they do something, but they don't believe they are able to change the situation. They are waiting from someone else. It doesn't work like this, and the new generation is excluded. Uh, many thanks, Nikos. I think you addressed a couple of major issues right now. One of them is the, the issue of city, uh, citizen empowerment and creating enabling net, uh, frameworks at national level. And for this, like the new uh, Renewable Energy Directive is a huge step forward in terms of that for the first time renewable energy communities are already defined and member states right now are obliged to put in practice uh, this kind of new rights which are enshrined at EU level and uh, it is essential to, key, to keep an eye right now during the process of finalization of national energy and climate action plans how member states are transposing this legislation, how they're removing the barriers and discrimination for these small scale actors that you mentioned, and that they have the chance to compete on an equal footing with other market participants. And also very important is also Article 18 on the um, Renewable Energy Directive on um, training and access to information, because many citizens also are not aware about these opportunities. So it's important to monitor right now also um, the developments on, on national level. Um, so I would like to, to ask if any of you have any last questions because bef before I give the floor to the uh, for, for concluding comments. Are there any last questions? Okay.
curriculum of the school. So this is very sad for us because we are interested in this topic and we want to learn more about it, but we can't because the system doesn't allow it to us. So this is very sad and maybe we should change the school system, but also we don't know what to do except going on the street. Would be great for maybe telling us what can we do instead of separating race or driving the bike to school. Uh, what we can do to fight climate change because it's us who, who will be affected with it. Thank you. Oh, thanks for this contribution. Uh, now I would like uh, to ask each panelist for uh, concluding remarks, uh, starting with a reverse order from Susanna. Yes, uh, I'm thinking from, from, from which angle to start, and I'm, I'm just having this, this quote in my head uh, from Greta Thunberg, which I would like to just put out. And the quote is, uh, she said this at the... Um, uh, at the COP in Katowice, and the quote was the following. We did not come here to beg the world leaders to care for our future. We, ha we have come to tell them that the change is coming, whether they like it or not. Um, no, I, I think it's, it's quite a daring quote, uh, but I think it's, it's good to be daring as, as young people. Um, I think as young people, we need to be out there and keep demanding politely but firmly our right to a future. Uh, I think there are many other ways how we can actually get engaged and how we can, where we can put this energy. I would maybe not focus that much on individual action. I think we are at a point of, at, at a level of the crisis where individual action might be important for raising awareness but will not solve the climate crisis. Um, I think a very interesting approach which I see now in, in some some cities is um, actually citizens organizing and asking their governments to declare a climate emergency. Um, I think it's an interesting approach. I think it would be also interesting to see what declaring a climate emergency can, can mean for, for job creation and what kind of jobs do, do we need to focus on and where, where should the money then go? Uh, because I think it's, it's impossible that, um, as you have said, we need a system change. It's not acceptable that any single euro from taxpayers' money goes to fossil fuels at this point. Uh, so I would maybe conclude, conclude by, by first of all thanking, thanking you for, for your comment and thanking all the young people who are there on the street because you are pushing the politicians and the politicians will need to be pushed. We will need a systemic change. And once we are working towards a systemic change, I, I believe that we will also be able to offer young people jobs in the green economy and they might be interested in, in, in them um, at that point. But until, but at this point, they don't trust us that we are actually serious about the climate crisis. So we need to get serious about the climate crisis first. Well, um, thanks a lot for your uh, intervention. I should say that, well, you were asking what else we can do. Um, uh, well, I wanted to say that, first of all, already going on demonstration and the strike which has been calling for the 15th is already a lot. Uh, there is a lot of narrative uh, around the entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs are um, illustrated in this uh, narrative as some kind of heroes of the 21st century and don't take me wrong because to a certain extent I can agree on that but uh, sometimes we are thinking of entrepreneurship and people are thinking about you know the creator of Facebook or any other um, businessman or woman but I think that what you are doing is social entrepreneurship and I think that we have to um, value that um, uh, to a great extent. So uh, keep on mobilizing is not easy at all. So uh, uh, and then, well, I don't want to be paternalistic because you know better than anyone else what to do and something that we are all going to do in May is to, to vote for the next uh, European elections and uh, we are, there is a, a lot on the table for the coming, coming um, attempt of the European governing bodies. Uh, I should say that Mm, I am particularly proud of these demonstrations of young people, uh, perhaps also considering that I'm an Spanish intra-EU intra migrant living in Flanders with a Flemish wife and a Flemish daughter, I should say, but I mean, uh, seeing that this movement started in Flanders, which I mean, with full respect, I wouldn't consider Flanders to be the region in Europe where th the youth is you know, more mobilized for social issues. The fact that, you know, these 
demonstrations sparked there for me you know it has something uh, like well i don't know uh, too personal but it's like a mm, fully trusting hope towards the future uh, with all the considering i mean the debate that we have about the gaps in international governance i would say that this should be fought uh, by increasing democracy in many other areas uh, uh, for example, for the case of the trade unions, industrial democracy, there is a lot uh, which can be done uh, uh, on that area and a lot has been already been doing. I saw in the YouTube uh, a speech of Donald Trump in a coal mining saying coal is not the energy of the past, not at all, it's the energy of the future. Why? Because coal mines uh, are not being seen by enemies from planes so that they cannot be, you know, something extremely stupid. Regrettably, I mean, the workers of this coal mining were applauding him. Well, but anyway, I can tell you that the workers really play a key role in defining the energy and the overall economic strategy of a company, of a sector, and of, of a whole uh, country, and why not uh, at worldwide level. Uh, I should. Uh, I wanted to finish by saying that I feel extremely comfortable in this uh, debate because whenever we, at European level, with employers at European level or our members at national level, are negotiating the youth employment policies, we are always clashing with this thing. I mean, this narrative of, for example, if we are talking about the uh, skills, uh, there is this mantra of okay, okay, but don't forget that the skills should meet the demands of the private sector, and we are saying, well, no, no. I'm coming, as I said, from Spain, from the one of the poorest regions. Uh, the Canary Island, and for many years, uh, skills in the vocational education assistant were only directed to the construction sector. And this, um, well, first of all, is not sustainable at all. We are not talking about green sustainability of buildings, but uh, with the outburst, outburst of the crisis, all these young people went to uh, unemployment and long term unemployment with. Uh, really serious social con consequences. Uh, so we have always been calling for, okay, uh, skills, yes, but uh, uh, skills demanded not by the private sector as such, but by a productive system which is sustainable in terms of the quality of the employment and the sustainability of the environment. So I'm very happy because I understand that 100% of the speakers and audience in this room uh, agree with this with this idea. Um, I was thinking what my kind of take home message from from this panel is because for me it's also a learning experience uh, as as everything is um, and I think it really is that we are still very much functioning in our little silos uh, and I think this is present at every level of government um, and that this is something that has to be tackled head on uh, for any of these issues to be addressed is that we work in our employment bubble, in our social bubble, in our environmental bubble and still the the connections are not quite there yet so, which is why I'm very happy to, to hear this proposal and, and to go into more detail on, on the proposals that you have from this research because it's explicitly breaking down the, those bubbles. Um, to bring it a bit back down to the to the youth guarantee, which is one initiative in in a big uh, grand scheme of things, but one that we have now on the table, um, I do believe that it can adapt uh, in a way that kind of makes that link with the green economy. We see it's already happening. Uh, many of some of the measures that that member states are implementing are directly linked to getting low skilled young needs. Uh, trained in green construction. This is one project from Luxembourg which has been very, very successful. Um, there are these projects that are happening. Um, they're not widespread and they're not kind of universal, but they are there. And I think that this, it has the foundation, the youth guarantee, to adapt to uh, to the future of work, to the future of, of, uh, of the labour market, and uh, and to be able to adapt to the, the green economy as well. So I think there is the potential there. Um, we are also in a, a state of change in terms of EU governance as well with a, a new parliament, a new commission, and these ideas are very much coming at the right moment. Uh, so uh, I will do my part, uh, <laughs> at least, uh, to transfer them on and, and to push for them because I fundamentally believe in them as well. Um, and 
once again thank you for your research and for, for this, this panel discussion. Thanks. Yeah, just just two things. Do not underestimate underst what you're doing. You can be proud of what you do. You can be proud of what you do. Because you have to know that at the beginning there was just one people in Sweden, that was Greta. Now that was you in the streets. And now that's people in all the world. So we have to see the big picture, what's happening. Because the 15th of March, next uh, Friday, we have demonstration in all Europe in all the world. And for example, in my country, in Spain, that's because of you that we have something right now. Yeah, it's because of you that we have, not only you, but you yeah. and a lot of people that we have climate change on top of the political agenda. So thank you. And the second thing that you have to know that thanks to you and all the young people, now the people in the institutions that we believe in this, that we believe in the system change, we can act. That's quite clear. The European Commission's member states, they just listen to the people that we have some people in the streets reclaiming. They, they know that. They know that. So now, thanks to you, we can ask for more ambition. Because what we uh, did in the European Parliament, in the European Council, with the new clean energy package, well, that's not bad. That's a step forward. I voted for everything. That's a step forward. But that's not enough. That's not enough at all. We are not on the track. We're not in the pathway of the Paris Agreement. Not at all. So thanks to you, now this step forward that we did, that's just a minimum. Because now we want to go much more forward. So just let you know that what you do, you can do much more, for sure. We can do all some, f some more things. But with that, we can do a lot in the institutions, thanks to you. So don't stop. Don't stop. And bring all your friends to the next demonstration, the 15th of March, because that will be a tipping point for everybody. Thank you very much, and go on. Well, I, I will only add uh, something. Yes, uh, thank you very much for this uh, for the, uh, this open discussion, and I would be delighted if now in 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 the European Commission uh, you you discuss uh, an opening the the youth guarantee for for greening economy and for for sustainable de development in Europe. But uh, you are not alone uh, in the in the European election. I, I my wish is that one will discuss. N not uh, there are much problem which uh, are discussed with a marginal problem uh, really. The no problem of future. We must discuss how can we give uh, future just to the next generation, to the young Europeans in 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 the European Union, so that uh, that also. Um, our living conditions in, in, in Europe uh, will have a future. And uh, I think in the discussion it is clear that it is uh, a modest attempt of, of our study to combine this, uh, these problems with uh, pr in the problem of, of youth employment. And it is understood well. And I hope that such discussion will be a theme in the, in the, in, in the European election too. And that afterwards uh, we can change something together with the uh, parliament, for example. Yes. Okay. Uh, would you like to say some final? With, with the speakers no? and, and the audience because uh, at the end, well, just to summarize our presentation uh, and trying to combine our presentation with the, with, the, with the speakers and all the interventions, just to say three things. No? One is that, uh, in my opinion, we had to combine and putting together uh, several, several topics. One is uh, the necessity to go from the, as, as Florence say, from the point of view of the uh, nearly zero energy building, we have to open mind and then go, um, and to be more ambitious if it's possible, and to go to the nearly zero energy district. Ob uh, I'm sure about that. And, con and in my opinion, that had to be connected with some something that uh, Harvey say, that, uh, okay, maybe uh, we have the opportunity now to 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 have or uh, to convert uh, consumers in producers, I think, in my opinion, that now uh, a good opportunity arises, a good opportunity uh, that will be in the direction that in a in the district level, in the district level, will be easier to have 
prosume, uh, prosumers. We, we, it will be easier to have producers and consumers and to exchange energy in the same uh, in the district level. It will be much easier than in the building level. Another another thing that uh, uh, that in my opinion has to be combined is that uh, in obviously obviously we are. Uh, care about uh, energy transition. So, uh, and I uh, obviously I know that there are, there are many other challenges uh, issues in Europe, but in my opinion, uh, the youth uh, the youth uh, guarantee program should be focused to uh, just a, a, a few number of topics, a few number of challenging uh, issues, and one of them that uh, could be addressed is the, the energy transition. So a way to, to avoid, in my opinion, that a way to avoid the bad use of this, uh, of this program could be just to very well focus the program and, and just to devote the program, the youth uh, guarantee program for a, a specific na uh, and few number of topics. And finally, uh, as one of the uh, uh, in the audience, one of the question was, uh, well, uh, we we are presenting a feasibility study, but uh, there is a concrete example of uh, application of the results that we get that that we got, uh, and the answer is yes. And in fact, the acronym of the new uh, of the new project in which nowadays we are working on is called Yes Clima, is uh, the application is the direct application of what we think that we can do. We, we think that uh, our obligation is to prepare young people working on energy transition and to prepare in many topics, in many specific tasks that has to be realized, that has to be carried out, sorry, uh, if, we, uh, if, if we want to get uh, that final and, and ambitious uh, objective that is the new resident energy building. There are many things to do, so uh, we have invited our own uh, youth guarantee uh, program. We have invited uh, a very small, obviously, uh, youth guarantee program that is new new uh, it has been a new project in which we are working na uh, now and nikos is slightly commented so that's all and thank you very much thank you very much would you like to say some last words um, in um, yes of course we social media are very important but sometimes we have keywords that also hashtag and we have keep in mind that, um, for example, collaboration is something very important. Collaboration between schools. Uh, we participate in a program uh, in, and we support uh, 73 schools in Athens and the children uh, do a perfect uh, work. They act as energy auditors, uh, mobilize the elder people, the, their parents, and you can connect with other schools to do activities, not only demonstrate. This is uh, fantastic, but you can collaborate with schools in different countries. So we need visioning. And I know that one school of them participated in a demonstration that we organized on 9th of December last year. And now there are more schools ready to do activities. So thanks because you mobilize again the, uh, the, the global community. I think it was something unexpected and we are not so happy with what happened that suddenly the youth mobilized uh, in Greece uh, uh, just a few demonstrations organized by NGOs but now it's the first time that young people prepare a demonstration 15th uh, I told you told this so this is very important and uh, of course we have we need partnerships uh, partnerships between different sectors between dif different actors uh, and this is nice and I'm very happy that <laughs> there are people here from different sectors and different uh, organizations. So let's continue on. It's the, the, the fight. I don't like war, but it is the fight of our uh, generation and uh, the, the planet to survive. Thanks a lot. Many thanks. So uh, first of all, I would like to thank Thank a lot to, to the authors for coming up with this initiative, uh, for sharing the results of the study. Uh, then I would like to thank to all the panelists from your for your expertise, for your perspective and engaging uh, in 
um, in this discussion. And uh, then, last but not least, I would like to thank all the young people for their courage and commitment and all the other participants that came today and took their time. Uh, we are going to share with you also this feasibility study per email to all the participants. I would like now to invite everyone for lunch where hopefully we could continue connecting the dots.